Hey guys, Josh here again, and today we have an Icarus Week 60 update. This week, they added a forecast system for storms. They also added a new backup system and fixed some bugs. Let's get into it, shall we? So Icarus Week 60 weather forecasting. Icarus Week 60 update, two hours of weather forecasting for oncoming storms. And they've added forecasting, giving you a heads up on storm sequences and add more variety to storm severity. This week, they are reworking their weather system, adding a forecast system that gives you up to two hours of insight into approaching weather patterns. This also adds more storm sequencing, creating up to seven different levels of severity to face, making this severity consistent across the entire map. This also gives them the ability to customize sequences for specific missions, making more unique challenges to the task at hand. Finally, they've improved their backup system to create a backup save file every 30 minutes and provide more safeguards against accidental data loss. So weather forecasting, our weather systems are giving an overhaul. The weather forecasting changes players' relationships with storms. Previously, storms were randomized with only the unique element being the different variations exclusive to the different biomes. In the new system, weather forecasting will provide up to two hours of insight into the incoming weather patterns. These weather patterns are applicable across the entire map. So outside of variations, example is sandstorms in the desert and blizzards in the Arctic, all other elements will be predictable and consistent regardless of your movements. This new system also adds more variety to the severity of storms you will experience. Rather than providing either of the two extremes, there are seven different levels ranging from a cosmetic impact to drastic damage. And you can kind of see that they give us a little bit of a diagram here. Uh, they show the different types of intensities of storms. I guess the different levels from least to greatest here. And the different biddable types or structure types that they're made out of. Like thatch wood, interior wood, glass, looks like aluminum, stone and concrete. So you got the least storm basically being almost no chance of storm damage on all building types except for thatch, which looks like it has a chance, small chance, of storm damage the second level of storm looks like it damages thatch for sure and the small chance of damaging interior wood the rest being okay the third level's damaging thatch interior wood and chances of damaging wood glass and aluminum and stone and concrete of course being okay level four storm warning which is thatch interior wood wood glass and aluminum will take damage for sure but stone and concrete are still still okay the level five storm warning which will damage everything except for concrete the chance of damaging stone the level six storm damaging everything but concrete and same thing for level seven everything but concrete so concrete is the only structure now that is completely impervious to any kind of storm damage. Stone being damaged at level 5, 6 for sure, and 7 for sure. As you can see, there's likely storm damage with anything in red, small chance of storm damage, anything in the yellow circles, and safe from storm damage on green. So the other benefit of them developing the storms the way they did is the ability to preset sequences and severities for specific missions. And the new layer detail will make each mission feel a little bit more unique and challenging in its own right. For example, the first few missions have lighter showers before introducing base damaging maelstorms in later missions. So the changes for the players, the infographic shows that more severe storms are highly likely to damage your stone buildings. In easy difficulty, storms won't only be cosmetic. You are more likely to see storms that do deliver some damage, even if the lower end of the spectrum. With effective forecasting, however, players can spend more time preparing rather than having a storm dropped on them unsuspectingly. And of course, they show a little diagram here. I'll show you that here shortly in game. And of course, the UI will appear in a bar like above the icons and colors represent the severity of the storms that will occur and the links of the bar represent the duration of the forecast to which the storms can occur and the severity that will be experienced at different stages it's also important to note that weather effects don't occur continuously throughout these periods rather the forecasting bar is showing the sections that predict how bad different periods may be. As with all weather predictions, expect some variation from what is shown. And of course, give them your feedback on various missions and forecasts for adjustments that they're going to do and as needed over the next following weeks. 
And just want to take this time to thank our YouTube members. Thank you so much, Sergio, Saracen, Wolfie, Brian, and KHX for being YouTube members and supporting the channel. Like I always say, thank you so much to our supporters and everybody who watches and subscribes to the channel. Thank you so much for your support and especially to our members who go the extra mile. I will look forward to doing some other content just for members here in the near future. So if you're interested in becoming a member and supporting the channel, go ahead and do so. And thank you to our current members. You guys rock. We're on a sticks hard and we are in the middle of a storm. We just logged into a middle of a storm, it looks like. And as you can see in the top right corner, we have an Icarus two-day forecast there. Looks like it's nothing more than an orange, yellow, two greens. Not too bad in the next two days. And of course, we still have our normal storm indicator. Right below the storm indicator is the new forecast. See, some time has passed and the storm is over. As you can see, within this time frame, there's going to be a chance of storm. So just keep a really close eye on your two-day forecast. Make sure you're not seeing any orange or reds in that area. You might want to head home and prepare. As you can see, our base is actually taking damage now. Looks about like 60 at a time. There's a large storm coming in here very shortly. They're improving their backup system this week, looking to provide more safeguards against accidental data loss, whether it be by players' files being corrupted or good old human error. Backups for character data, profile data, and active prospects are now created at a 30-minute interval and stored alongside the original file with a .backup extension. In the event of a unexpected shutdown, the latest backup will be automatically restored, reducing the data loss to within a 30 minute interval for players. That's pretty cool. Users can manually restore a backup by replacing the original file with the most recent backup and removing the .backup file extension. The valves will be kept for up to five hours of gameplay, allowing you to manually roll back in 30 minute increments within this time frame. Okay, and now we've played 30 minutes. Now we can see in our Icarus saved player data and our Steam ID in this folder that we have a new profile JSON and it's dot backup. So this is the backup JSON for our profile here. So if something was to happen to our profile or something changed or something like that, we could just go ahead and name this profile and it should take over our profile that we have currently. So we're going to go ahead and actually we went ahead and backed up our profile here. We're going to go ahead and delete this just to show you guys and rename this by right clicking on it or double left clicking on it. Slow double left click. So we're going to take that backup off the end of that and the period and just name this profile.json and confirm the changes to it. And this should load up our profile for Icarus. So that's how you back up the profile. As you can see, we were on our Y prospect and now we have a JSON backup of Y as well. So you could do the same thing. We're not going to do it, but we, we could do the same thing on that prospect. Just, I would back it up first, honestly, but you could go ahead and just right click on it, rename it. Uh, if you do see the file extensions, you'll have to see file extensions, of course, but you'll have to delete that and just name that .json like so but you need to delete this one first it won't let you have two files named the same and you're good to go and as you can see my profiles is just fine everything's backed up and nothing got deleted so that actually worked the what we just did deleting the backup off the end of it so if you do have like a crash or computer crash or something along that sort if you go ahead and just rename your old backup delete the new one and you should be good to go and this week we have a change log in the new content section this week. They talked about adding new weather patterns for all the prospects. They also added GG host to the list of verified server providers and talk about the new weather icons that we showed you. So they moved most of the early missions and all outposts to mostly mild weather pattern and increased the average storm severity on exploration missions. They also mentioned that they added an optional initial forecast to prospects it's a possible grace period to ease players in on new prospects and in our fix section this week they talked about cleaning up and improving some more lod's here's one that i like fix bug where sandworm world boss could sometimes teleport to the center of the map 
and also fixed a bug where the dead sandworm boss icons would reappear when rehosting a prospect and reduced performance impact of sandworm world bosses active in the world when players aren't nearby I think they worked a little bit on the lod's for olympus as well and disabled skeleton taking and refreshing on sandworms in the level that aren't currently re relevant Maybe they fix where sandworms are properly displayed in the map on open world. That'd be cool. Looks like they did some typo fixing. Here's one that's pretty good. Missions no longer start until the dropship has landed. And looks like they fixed the rifle so you're no longer zoomed in whenever you die. All right, in the new content this week, exotic tree device. Added backpack mesh plus material and edited textures. Talk a little bit about the predator bird. Added mage tree roots and general cleanup on the quad DLC map geothermal lakes adding deep ice deposit spawns in the arctic growth stages for aln exotic plant made a little bit of adjustments to swamp quad footsteps and then the next few sections here they talk about the pre-built structures and how they're setting those up updating pre-built structure for the treehouse as well as updating the base structure icons so a treehouse that sounds pretty cool looks like we're gonna have some caves with lava in it and a volcano Talked a little bit more about the fish data. They're updating. Swamp rocks and grassland rock. Adding Souls Arctic Hideout Base. Interesting. Updating Prometheus Mission 4. Adding Souls Hideout. Swapping Boss Creature to be a Snow Stalker. And updating Quest Markers for the quest. So they're adding Hyena Cougar, Elephant Jaguar, Piranha Snow Leopard, Decoration Statue data, which is not available yet to craft. Icons and recipes that still need creating. Add the system for spawning exotic plants. Talking a little bit about the fishing bench. Fishing benches can now craft lures and rods on one side and fillet fish on the other. I don't see anything else in this change log. And guys, that's it for this video. Don't forget if you like what you see to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for weekly Icarus update videos like this one. And also, don't forget to check out our new guide video, 100 plus tips and tricks for Icarus. And let me know if we had anything in there that you didn't know already. Thank you guys for watching, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Peace.